Welcome everybody here to our next webinar at uh, JFT Brokers for trading of uh, sideboard markets. Uh, that's the topic of today. A warm welcome in the name of JFT as well as from my end and my end means Stefan Friedrichowski. Uh, yeah, to mention the date, we have the 21st of March 2019. Theoretically, um, we have eight dates left until the Brexit or not. Mm, we will see. Uh, next month's webinar, we know more. Uh, whether it's postponed uh, or whatever happened, uh, but it's a tough time right now. But Brexit is not the, uh, the topic for today. Uh, today we uh, talk about how to trade sideward markets. And you may ask yourself, oops, what is Stefan talking about? Sideward markets and those we should trade and even trading that market's profitable? Can that be? Is that possible? Normally we are looking for great chances, um, a 100 point move of whatever in one direction. And now we should trade something which is getting boring. Yeah, that's exactly the topic. And as I mentioned in um, the description of this webinar, when it becomes boring, the market becomes boring, then it's time to trade. And how? Yeah, we will see within the webinar. A few details uh, before I really start. You know, you can already upload, uh, download uh, the slides of today's webinar uh, via the go to webinar control panel. And um, of course, you can send me an email whenever you like. Uh, for example, later I will show some Excel sheets if you want to have those, no problem. Just send me an email. Uh, to s. at jfdbrokers.com. As always, uh, I will make sure that you get those kind of informations. Unfortunately, those Excel sheets I cannot upload here. Uh, there's an upload filter. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's a topic during the last couple of days, at least here in uh, Germany. But anyhow, uh, uh, by email, there's no filter, so I can do it. Uh, and uh, second, uh, as always, you know, the procedure before I really start, I have to show once our risk disclaimer, meaning, um, yes, we talk about trading, we talk about trading strategies, we even talk about how to execute and how to set up trades and uh, yeah, everything. But finally, when it comes to your own trading, everything is on your own responsibility. I think, yeah, that's self-explaining and um, of course you will understand uh, that uh, we mark as always. A little bit more in detail about the topic of today. So I will try to motivate you with two examples and they are totally different. One stems from JFD Invest. You know that is a social trading platform at uh, JFD Brokers uh, where you can copy um, strategies, uh, something like a, a copy um, platform for trading strategies you select and then those strategies are copied into your account. Anyhow, there's one strategy under the name Archimedes and that kind of strategy is quite interesting because it's trading an unusual symbol and that unusual symbol is Euro Polish Slotty. And I assume that you may never before have traded Euro Polish Slotty, at least um, for my end, uh, it's only a couple of days ago that I started trading around that. But you will see that kind of Forex pair is a very good example of being boring. And how the strategy Archimedes is trading as a kind of symbol. We will try to figure out a little bit more, but just take that as an example of that trading a boring underlying can be quite can quite be um, profitable. Another, just uh, for motivation, we talk about two chart examples where we directly compare a typical trend behavior in the sideward market. And uh, yeah, of course, we can discuss some information there as well. Finally, I want to set up 
the setup. So I want to introduce the setup of how to trade sideward markets uh, profitable. So what are the ingredients, so to say, um, for, for trading sideward markets? And of course, we will do some statistical analysis of which markets are really boring. And maybe we can, we can filter some symbols which are boring over long periods of time. And indeed, we can. And there are a couple of, uh, I think about eight, eight different markets which are inherently boring or, so to say, more like sideward markets. And then finally, we do a statistical inv investigation of what can we achieve uh, if we follow those kind of um, um, strategies, those setups. And um, all in all, I will introduce a complete portfolio for selected markets and show you some uh, live results out of my account. Okay, but let's really get started here. So. What you see here in my first chart is uh, that's uh, the equity, or better to say, the, the growth in percent of that specific account. And that account um, is the uh, strategy Archimedes. And you see over more than six months now, very steady growth. And um, especially what we can see, okay, there are some problems maybe here in February. We will see later uh, a little bit more about that. And the why and but nevertheless it's trading uh, the, the, the equity or in this case the growth uh, is quite steady perfect okay that's the one end but the other let's look to the symbols being traded and then you can see okay um, most of the trades are euro polish slotty and uh, there's a um, second uh, most is the euro swiss franc okay at least from Euro Swiss Franc, you might know that besides the one day, 15th of January 2015, um, the day when um, the 1.2 exchange rate uh, limit um, has been stopped by the Central Bank of Switzerland, besides that one day and a few days later, um, Euro Swiss Fraud is boring in itself. So there must be a specific strategy behind if you trade boring markets and that you can do it quite profitable. Yeah, we realize directly within uh, the growth chart here. Let's have a look to Euro Polish Slotty. Okay, on the left hand, you have exactly Euro Polish slot here, and on the right hand side, you have uh, another example of a chart. Uh, in this case, it's uh, just GOAT. In both cases, I have a D1 chart uh, representing more or less exactly the same time uh, we have seen in the growth chart of uh, the strategy Archimedes. So, starting in August last year, so a little bit more than six months uh, history we have within the chart. Okay, let's start on the left-hand side. Euro Polish Slotty. Uh, okay, it's obvious. Uh, most of the time, yes, the market is just wiggling around. Then here, um, the end of January, February, uh, there was, was something strange, at least compared to the, the other times here. Uh, a lot of trend, let's call it that, up, and then a few days later, uh, down again but a little bit more straight behavior, finally. Okay, but I have made another um, remark here. Pay attention to the scale. That's something we often forget uh, when we look to the chart. Let's have a look to the scale. So the upper limit here is 4.34 and the lower is 4.24. So there's a difference in point one compared to the absolute value of about four that means the overall range here in percent is just two and a half percent that's nothing two and a half percent uh, yeah that's two and a half percent um that's the overall range over was a period of six months for that symbol that's a low number we will see 
And then, um, just to, uh, to repeat myself, so it's obvious that symbol is sideward and nothing else. Let's look to what we normally try to do. We look, for example, for gold, and then what we would do is um, we identify maybe highs here, then the next lows. Maybe that will, would trigger that we go finally long on a long-term trade, and after a couple of months, we have succeeded in, in selling maybe even at the high here, and in total, we have earned about 150 points, which is a quite good trade. That would be would give us some remarkable profit. But what I did here right now is um, that was an ideal trade. I mean, um, we cannot get much more out of the chart than that one single trade. Okay, there might be some smaller other opportunities, but uh, even to, to catch exactly that kind of behavior uh, would be quite tough. And finally, we got one extremely good trade. Okay, on the other hand, um, the Galileo, I think within that time period here, he got about 1k gross in a 3k account. About that. Hey, I think we cannot get the same number within any gold trades here around. So you see already, even if I picked the best trade within the six months period of gold, um, the other one has earned much more. Besides the fact it would be extremely difficult to, to catch exactly that trade I mentioned. So let's go back to the scale of the chart. So upper end 1350, lower end uh, about 150, close to 200 points lower. Hey, 200 points uh, compared to the absolute value of 1300, uh, that's about 20%, okay, maybe only 15. You see the difference? That is a totally different behavior uh, compared to Euro Polish Slotty. It's, so it's much more than the chart might suggest just by looking. No, of course, we have no trend within the Euro Polish Slotty, but the overall range over six months is extremely low. And that is later we will see one thing we exactly need for that kind of strategy. We need um, no long-term trend. Exactly that kind of behavior, having a steady growth over a longer time, gives problem. And even, let's go back, when has been the problem within the account of uh, Archimedes? Around February. Let me go back here, and then we'll check. Okay, exactly in February, even that strategy has had problems. It would cover completely fine, but it's, we can already um, see what, what causes problems. And what causes problems is a long, um, longer period in one direction. Okay, anyhow, strategy is quite successful. But in order to, to let's say, transform that kind of behavior into a profitable strategy. Okay, what what kind of ingredients we need for, for really trading something like that? Okay, preferable, we need flat sideward markets. And I will go for that uh, a little bit uh, later on one of the next slides. But what is the overall trading approach here? And it's quite easy. It's a combination, or it's going long and short and doing that even simultaneously. But what we have to do is we have to, to introduce rebuys. And you may think, okay, rebuys, uh, that, that might be me, um, not good. Or uh, I have read uh, never rebuy uh, if you are in a loss. In principle, you're right. But we have, um, if you do it right, then it's okay. But still, I have to mention um, that for the attention high risk, uh, that causes the higher risk. The next couple of steps, I will go through the slide here, um, but then I go to a chart and do it once again. And in one of the two cases, I hopefully, I hope that you catch uh, the, the, the idea behind. So 
Let's start with a long trade. That we later do it even simultaneously, doing long and short trades. Um, uh, might sound funny, but it's exactly what we can do for, for boring cyber markets. But let's just start with a long trade. So we, have, we go for something long, and what we have is a euro take profit. Okay, think about um, trading ducks. Um, later it will turn out that uh, trading ducks for that kind of strategy is exactly what you should not, not uh, go for. But anyhow, it, um, talking about ducks and uh, take profits in euro is always uh, always the easiest way because uh, one point is um, one euro uh, if you trade one lot. So therefore it's uh, it's easier to tell you about the story behind. So we open a long trade and we have an euro take profit. Okay, let's think we, we buy one lot ducks and uh, after 10 points, uh, that means 10 euro, that would be our take profit. We go for 10 euros. If we go that way, we have what I call an initial lot size. For Forex, we would go for maybe the minimum, which is 0.01. For ducks, it might be 0.1. Anyhow, we have an initial lot size. That's our starting volume for the first trade. If market went north, everything is fine. So after getting those 10 points, uh, we are in the take profit and trade is done. Okay, that's easy. Other way, market goes south. And now let's let's start with a extremely simple rule and that rule is if our loss our floating loss of the trade equals the same euro amount than what we have as take profit so in my case here now at minus 10 euro then we do a rebuy meaning we open another long trade for that symbol in my case now DAX. Okay, but now the question uh, is, what is the size of that we buy? So, uh, how many lots do we trade? Assuming that we start with one lot, then the first we buy we do is once again exactly one euro, uh, one one lot. Or to be more general, we buy always exactly that amount, which represents our accumulated amount. Let me be a little bit more practical. So we start with one lot. Okay, the first rebuy, one lot once again. That means in total we have now two. If we need another rebuy, then we buy two because our accumulated position size is already two. Next step would be four, then eight, and then 16. You see what happens? And that's uh, the high risk behind that kind of strategy. Okay, but nevertheless, so if we don't have too many rebuys, then we can manage. And maybe you imagine already why sideways markets are extremely good for that kind of behavior. That means we don't have a long trend in one direction. And assuming I go here long, uh, as I mentioned, and market goes for a long time south, then I get a problem. But if we are in a sideward market, okay, so we don't have a long-term trend in one direction, especially if we have something like extremely boring, like Euro Pornish slotty. Uh, uh, sorry, that's no criticism or any remark about Poland, no. The exchange rate is boring, not country. So the exchange rate you punish that is really boring, and it has no long trend in one direction. I mentioned, let me go for the same procedure once again here within a chart, because uh, that is telling you maybe much more. I have here a DAX chart, and um, um, what time frame doesn't really matter. What I will use in order to illustrate the, the concept of that strategy, I will just uh, use one rectangle. And let me draw that one here. And uh, then, because it's always tricky to get it in the right size. And now I want to have it in a size, uh, let's change it a little bit here, uh, with 20 points. So 20 points, meaning if you trade one lot, 
that would be um, 20 years. We use exactly that box because now we can we can really go um, quite easy here to to illustrate what I'm um, going for. Okay, let's take any start point here, and I will go for here, and I go for a horizontal line that we know exactly my starting point. At that point in time, let's assume I open a long trade. Hmm. You see immediately, long is not the best here, but hmm, let's start. So normally, um, here we start our long long trade in uh, DAX. Uh, we buy one lot, and we have a take profit of 20 euro. Okay, that would be here. And now you see why I need that box, because then everything is quite easy to, to um, illustrate here. So our take profit would be here. Unfortunately, we will not hit the take profit, at least not in the next couple of minutes. Okay, what will we do? Let's have another box to the south, so here. And then we can realize that already here, at that point in time, you see, uh, I go back from, from, uh, from the box, we go already beyond the lower limit. That means already here, we do the first rebuy. Okay, let's draw a line. We, are, um, we have here our first rebuy. Now the question, we have to take profit for the complete position, for the both, for, for the two open positions. That's easy if we do it exactly that way. That line here is a take profit level. Think about that. The first position, if we once again come back to, to the, our original entry point here, our first position um, equals zero. So it has no profit, no loss. So because it's exactly where we start. Okay, so no profit from that part of our overall position. But the other part we opened here earns exactly our 10 euros. That's good. So our original take profit from here when we have had only one lot, went down to here. So with our two lots, now we need just those 20 points here. Then we are at, um, at the level that we hit our take profit. We would close both trades and we have, would have earned our 20 euros, which is, which is our euro profit, the take profit level. But you see, we will not hit that, <laughs> at least not in the next couple of minutes here. Okay, price goes further south. So we would have another rebuy here. Okay, drawing the next line here. And we have to take profit now. If you do the math behind here, it's really easy. It's always the previous buy level. Our overall position would earn exactly our 20 euros in total if we would come back one step to the north. Unfortunately, we see um, it would not hit that level. Okay, we go further south. And what I did here was really by purpose. I looked for an extremely bad entry position for a long trade. Okay, next here. Take profit level, you know already, it's always the, the, the last um, horizontal line we draw. And then we go one further step. We get one additional buy here. And now you see what happens. A few minutes later, we have our take profit. So if you do the math behind, you will see that we do the rebuys on a grid base. Therefore, you can call that kind of strategy a grid strategy. The rebuys are, strictly speaking, like Martingale. Yes, um, only the first one is not because that we don't double anything. Um, if you would do something like that, then it would change the picture a little bit. And of course, you can create other logics. But this one is the easiest one in terms of drawing all the lines because everything is equidistant. Um, and our take profit level for the overall position is always the previous entry. 
That's the logic. What does it mean? It means what we finally need is one move in our original direction of our trade, meaning low going north, yes, one move exactly with so many points, which is our initial take profit level. So we would earn what we need here. One move with that kind of distance. Hey, that's cool. It means even if we are wrong, and I have been totally wrong opening a long trade at that point in time here, um, after four rebuys, I need one move, my 20 points, and I got everything, the complete trade, um, trade sequence being a profit trade. That's good. Okay. And we keep in mind that we need exactly that one move. Following the complete procedure of the strategy, it would even be more profitable. Remember my saying, I open a long and short trade simultaneously. Hey, that's nice. Because what, So I would not only have opened a long trade at that point in time here, I would have opened a short trade as well. And now the picture is much easier. You see, after a couple of candles, my first trade is already in the take profit, my short trade. I would have opened another short trade. Okay, I got another hit of take profit for the short trade and another hit and another hit. Hey, that's four times already take profit for the short side. And then finally, I got one hit, this one here, um, one time my euro take profit level for the long trade. That's cool. You see that the, the last short trade opened here would need a couple of rebuys once again, but then we would hit the take profit later even again. You think, uh, is that real? The answer is yes. What's the problem behind? The problem is that you have to choose the right symbols. If you would do it really in the ducks, it would be a disaster. Why would it be a disaster? From time to time, we have the situations within the ducks that it goes just in one direction. And then those rebuys with increasing lot size would ruin any account. So in order to, to be profitable with that kind of approach, we definitely need a filter for which symbols do we trade. Or at least we need a filter that we don't trade always. Just as an example, yesterday, uh, even during the webinar, uh, we have had um, the federal uh, interest rate decision in the uh, United States. Um, yeah, During those events, I would not trade that kind of strategy. Volatility in general is good for the strategy, but sometimes it goes in one direction for a longer time. And if so, we would get problems with our rebuys. But why should we trade? We just can stop trading during those uh, days why we don't have to trade always. So we know those events in advance and uh, nobody forces us to trade. So we, we get already a collection of good hints. Trade symbols which are boring, which have clear statement of being a sideways market and don't trade if there are upcoming news. Okay, that's already done deal. Very important. Um, inputs. And the other, I repeat myself, we need one move into our original intended direction and then everything is fine and our trade sequence would always be a take profit trade. Good. Having that in mind, we can go further. Nevertheless, I want to mention that there are other kind of alternatives of how to, to calculate when to do the rebuys and uh, with what 
amount of uh, lot size and so on and so forth. Later you will learn that, that my final strategy is the strategy goes a little bit different, but for educational purposes, I did it first this way because that is much easier to to draw uh, in any chart. What I finally would do is, for example, um, um, I'm not using a complete grid. I use loss levels. So whenever my trade has a specific loss, but the overall position and uh, that creates a kind of different different behavior and i will in my case i always buy the same amount i always buy 0.01 lot for forex uh, when i do those rebuys but later if it comes if my trade comes to problems i will more often do that kind of rebuys but always with 0.01 lot uh, it changes the picture but what we learned here uh, is much easier to uh, to illustrate. Anyhow, let's go further. So, first question: Which markets are most boring? <laughs> That's always a funny question that I um, uh, ask for boring markets. Normally, we are looking for for trendy markets, but nevertheless, we uh, we do uh, some calculations and then we will get out that. So, um, the most boring uh, and nearly all uh, always is a euro Polish slotting. Anyhow, a lot of markets might be temporarily boring. Uh, even for, beside yesterday, uh, the last couple of days and even uh, a few months, uh, euro um, US dollar has been boring, more or less sideways. Um, so even those can be traded. The characteristic of a boring market are small moves and no moves in a one direction for a longer period of time but we can we can um, get that even even better so and that's I prepared an Excel sheet for that uh, and I did some calculations so what I asked myself is how far is the for a specific symbol the price moving if I look maybe from now five minutes back, 10 minutes back, 20 minutes back, one hour, one day. So for a specific time, what, that's the question now, what is the average move, but without taking in account, into account the direction? So every, every number is positive. Think about that. What does it mean? Let me turn it the other way around. If I would open a trade or for whatever symbol, let's say Euro Swiss franc, and I wait ten minutes, can we can we calculate a number of how many percent we can expect typically, let's say for ten minutes or one hour or four hours? And the answer is yes, we can calculate exactly those numbers. And that's what I have done here. And I, I took the average over the last 14 years for all the different symbols you see already here within that graph. Um, the graph itself is maybe a little bit strange in terms of its uh, so-called double logarithmic, uh, logarithmic scale. And we have on the y-axis, we have the percentage move. And on the x-axis, the days. So starting... In, uh, indeed with five minutes and this up to seven days and if you if I pick now one one symbol here for example um, the upper line here is uh, the strange symbol which is called GRX Euro uh, and indeed that's the DAX and we have uh, the S&P 500 as well which has a abbreviation of uh, SPX in this case uh, that's the source data therefore we have that's a strange symbol but anyhow uh, so for 0.3 days the typical move of the DAX is uh, about 0.7 percent okay but what can I learn of that? Maybe nothing. But we can see those symbols which are most boring. And I have ordered those already. And the hit list is exactly what we have here on the right hand. The most boring symbol is Euro Swiss franc. The second 
Australian dollar, no New Zealand dollar, and so on. You see already on 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 uh, um, three euro Polish slotty, and I put even some other one other really strange uh, symbol within the list, which is euro Hungarian forint, which is boring as well. And I took the average over the last fourteen years, and the difference between the different symbols is quite huge. There's more than a factor of uh, five between Euro, Swiss franc, and DAX. That means, so to say, Swiss franc is five times more boring than the DAX. And the DAX is exactly that kind of symbol which you sh should not go for that kind of strategy. And if you look on the lower end of that uh, list, you will see symbols, uh, most of them have uh, Japanese yen within their name. And Japanese yen um, is always tricky uh, in terms of that kind of strategy because the Japanese yen has a tendency to move a longer time in one direction. And that would bring higher percentage number here and therefore we have a totally different behavior. So we see already what's good. We can do here some more analysis because here I did the calculations uh, just in, in, in percent. So how many percent move do we have? We can do the same in terms of, okay, let's assume I trade 0.01 lot for Forex and 0.1 for, for DAX and S&P 500. Um, now I can calculate uh, the same graph in, in Euro. So what is a typical move of a minimum lot size trade after X minutes? And I did the same here, um, just to that you see what's uh, the real kind of behavior of the chart. It's a more square root-like behavior. Now it's not a double logarithmic scale, it's uh, the scale as it is, the linear scale, and um, the y-axis is now euro, and um, the x-axis here is uh, still days. And you see, once again, DAX is um, the worst case scenario, and uh, we have those um, Japanese yen, or a few at least, uh, down here. And we have a lot of British pound pairs, um, which have the tendency for high moves. So in high moves, we learned that is poison for that kind of strategy. What are the best one here? Okay, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. It's just another way of how to look to, to that kind of picture. It's a little bit different than the percentage behavior. Um, and the, the, the main difference is that we calculate really euro traits and that's what what i want to do finally anyhow it illustrates we can already identify markets which are boring in itself and that's good because those markets we need for that kind of trading approach so how can we go further here uh, so we know the kind of strategy um I introduced already that, and uh, we know which markets are most attractive for that. But then, nevertheless, we can do a complete investigation. And the, 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 the question is, once again, simply referring to one statement. That kind of trading approach needs finally one move with X euros in our trading direction. You remember the DAX chart? One move, in this case, it have been 20 euros in my direction, and I'm done. And I have a trade which is profitable for the complete trade sequence. But the question is now, just statistically, because we can do that kind of uh, investigation for, for the complete history of the last 14 years, um, how long does it take? So from starting a trade at any time, how long do, do we have to wait until we, we have that one move with X euros in our direction, which means that our trade is coming to a positive end? 
So that's an interesting question. How long does it take? Typically, in average, over the last 14 years. And the other very important question is, how often do we have to execute rebytes? As you know, uh, we cannot uh, have too many rebytes because that uh, might um, yeah, yeah, give us some problems with our account. And last question, um, what target should we go for? 20 euros? Maybe less? 5 euros? Or even less? 1 euro? So what should be a good target value for those, uh, for that kind of approach? And that we do for all our different kind of symbols. I did that kind of investigation, even on an M5 base, which means I have investigated 1 million candle, candles per, per symbol. And what I really did here, I, in simulation, I traded each candle long as well as short. Both. So my, my statistics here is over 1 million candles per symbol. Okay, um, that statistic uh, yeah, represents big numbers, so we can trust those. And the outcome is simply that kind of table. I know it's, it, it looks a little bit complicated, but it's much easier than you think. And I will uh, illustrate and... Uh, tell you a little bit more about the details within that table. Uh, first, you have uh, the different symbols. That's easy. And now we start with the statement, OK, we always go for 0.5 euros as take profit level. That's the profit target. And now we have some numbers here, like number of M5 candles until we reach the take profit. And you see, um, in this case, uh, it, it may, may sound um, uh, strange that we have uh, digit numbers here, uh, like uh, 43.8 candles, um, but uh, it's an average with a, a 1 million candles. So we need 43 candles um, to reach our take profit, typically. And you see other numbers uh, for other symbols. Uh, last one here was 208 for S&P 500. Um, then I calculated the average loss for the initial trade, the, the first one, the 0.01 lot trade. OK, uh, that number is not that telling that much, but anyhow, I, I put that in the table as well. Now it becomes more interesting. What is the average number of rebuys we have to do, we have to execute. The average number of rebuys for Australian dollar, Canadian dollar is um, 2.8. Okay, that sounds good. That's not that many. Um, so in average, no problem. Uh, definitely no problem. And even all the other would have been no problem. But now it comes becomes tricky. What is the maximum number during the last 14 years uh, doing those rebuys. Okay, we have a 47 for uh, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, but look, for example, for the next one. Okay, oops, 299. Uh, that we cannot have in any account. But think about that Australian dollar, Swiss franc. Okay, that, meaning, that means the 15th of January 2015 is within. Uh, so that's tricky. We have a special event there, and there's a long period which has been suffering from, from that move, from that day. Anyhow, we can get a little bit better. Let's just uh, bring that to, uh, I will bring that to an end, what, what uh, numbers else we have within the table. Uh, so I built something like a, a histogram here. So what is the proportion uh, of um, those with less than two rebuys, in this case, close to 50%, 28% between two and four rebuys, and so on and so forth. And you see, more than 10 rebuys is only in 2.5% of all cases we have to do that. But now comes the good part. If you go a little bit further the road, for higher euro take profits, like five euros, the picture changes. Look for the number of rebuys. Okay, maximum number of rebuys within the last 14 years 
for Australian dollar, Canadian dollar has been 13. Okay. Still, Australian dollar first of all is a problem, but that one looks good. Okay. And the, the percentage of all candles which need more than 10 rebuys is 0.05%. Hey, that's a good one. Let me sort the table along that uh, number. Because then we have the best performing um, or the best symbols um, on top. And now you see what is the best symbols for that kind of trading strategy. Australian dollar, Canadian dollar is the best one. Euro, uh, Hungarian, foreign, and so on and so forth. You see it goes down here. And on uh, place eight is a euro Polish slotty. Those are the symbols which are best for that kind of strategy. In this case, with a euro take profit level of five euro. And you remember the procedure? Draw those rectangles within the chart, and then you can repeat it even by hand, um, by your own. You can go for higher numbers the higher euro pro take profit levels even, then your trading activity goes down, which is fine because you might do it even manually. Um, and still you have a way how to, to finally get profitable trades. I repeat myself. The important thing is to go for the right symbols. We should trade that kind of strategy if the market is boring. Those which are heading that list are boring in itself. But still, we have to, to keep an eye on, on are there upcoming news? Uh, can we see something strange in the future? Are there elections in a specific country or something like that? And then stop trading. We don't have to trade 24 hours every, uh, every day of the week, no. Those things we should keep in mind on top. We have already a good selection for the symbols, but we should do that kind of, of view um, on the markets additionally. Okay, up to now it was, everything was statistically. Um, but I mentioned I have already a trading portfolio and we will find more or less exactly the same uh, symbols uh, once again. But a complete trading portfolio, and I will show you the account a little bit more in detail, and then I will explain how I do the rebuys uh, within that kind of strategy. But first, we have those eight symbols I'm trading. And since from other webinars, you might know that I have um, methodologies of, of um, doing optimization on a on a um, I do it once again and again and again and again, which is called the walk forward methodology from time to time. And from those eight symbols, two I do not trade right now. Um, and I update uh, this uh, every uh, about one month. And maybe in one month, um, they are traded again. But right now, I don't trade those two symbols. It's always looking for the short term. History, short term, still means a couple of months and seeing, hey, that has not been the best results and therefore I stop uh, trading on, on those two symbols. But anyhow, I do it a little bit different here with finally with that kind of approach just to be a little bit more uh, on the safe side. What I have is a stop loss for those trade sequences. You see the, the numbers here. And I have another thing. I have a limit, a limitation for the overall lot size for trade sequence. Trade sequence, I always call uh, those trades after, uh, one after each other, um, which belong together. I have a maximum lot size here. I have a target. You remember those numbers like five euros or two euros. I have exactly values in that region, but I have another number. And that number is what I call the average loss for increase. What I do within that kind of strategy, and it's a little bit more complicated to illustrate, but I at least want to, to mention it, how I run the strategy finally in my account. Um, I don't do that kind of doubling procedure. So 
I always buy 0.01 lot. I, for single trade, I never buy more. Always constantly 0.01 lot. And I start, let's think about a long position, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Uh, has I start with my 0.01 uh, lot and my take profit would be 4.7 euros. But trade goes in the wrong direction. And after seeing a loss of 9.21 euros, I would do the first rebuy with 0.01 lot. Okay, now I have two positions. When do I do the next rebuy? Not one. So the grid approach we discussed up to now would be, yeah, where well, the price is uh, again 9 euro 21. Uh, going south. In my case, it's a little bit different. I calculate the loss per 0.01 in average. And whenever that number is once again ahead 9.21 euros, I do those rebuys. That means, and I will show you in the chart, that the longer it takes or the, the, the more the price goes into the wrong direction, I will do my rebuys more and more of frequent later, but starting quite conservative. So later I will do will be more aggressive, but my starting is less aggressive. So uh, I tolerate some more losses at the beginning. Doing that average loss for increase with 0.01 lot. I manage the trades always as a as a trade sequence, as a total position. So when I um, have that take profit, it's meant for the combination of all long trades. Same for the stop loss. But let's have a look to the count. Um, let me go. And here you see that. Um, Let's start with the numbers first. So I, I started that account a little bit more than three weeks ago. Um, no, uh, it's four, four weeks ago, sorry. Uh, with 5K, I'm already more than 300 euros ahead. Fine. You see the symbols I'm trading and you see already within those charts, no new trade sequence uh, for two symbols. Um, yeah, I mentioned those two uh, already. And you see already uh, with uh, some funny graphs with those lines. Let me first go for another one because that one um, is illustrating a little bit better uh, how I do the rebuys. Overall, um, those those red and green lines represent uh, parts of those trade sequences. And finally, you see, let me go here, um, all end at the same point. What does it mean? Here, my trade sequence hit its take profit level. Let's go exactly for that one here as a good example. Uh, originally, the trade sequence started here. Here, I opened a short trade on that symbol. And you see, okay, price first went into my direction, but obviously I'm not heading the take profit level, otherwise we would have a green line down here. Then price went up. Okay, I did the first rebuy here. Then the second rebuy here. Then price went into my preferred direction, but still I'm not heading my take profit. Unfortunately, price went further uh, north. So I did additional rebuys here, 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 here. And you see more rebuys here. Always 0.01 lot. But then finally, I got that kind of move, and it's now not still the same picture like the, the, the blue box within the DAX graph, uh, because the calculations of lot sizes is different here. I, I have that one move going south, and the overall trade position went to the check profit. So that's a one trade sequence. And you see a lot of trade sequences here um, uh, as well. So you, you have a trade sequence starting from here, coming up here. Uh, that has been a long trade. Um, first going up, but not hitting the take profit level. Later, I did some rebuys here, and then I hit my take profit. Perfect. 
That's the way how that kind of strategy is, is, uh, is acting and finally uh, generating those kind of profits. And honestly, to have within four weeks uh, more than 300 uh, euros in a 5k account, um, yeah, it's a quite remarkable result. And I will keep that account. And you see how things are running uh, in my end always. You see, I'm starting with a demo account. And after that demo account has a couple of months good results, then I switch to a live account. But uh, demo account always first. And I want to see more than three uh, good months, uh, sometimes even six months. And then I switch to uh, a live account, but not earlier. Um, in order to, to get more information about the real life of uh, such a strategy. You can trade that kind of strategy by your own, if you like. Uh, you have all the informations here. Um, think about how I do the, the, the rebuys with that average loss procedure. But you can even go for the more simple one. Uh, with those blue boxes I illustrated within the DAX chart. Uh, but you can do exactly the same with any other chart. Just draw that kind of box with uh, in Euro, uh, US dollar chart, uh, let's say for a 0.01 trade, uh, lot trade with a profit of 5 euros. If you have problems to, to, to um, draw that, that rectangle, just open the trade. Um, even a fictive trade or a buy limit order uh, with a stop loss level, uh, then you can get those lines and move around the lines. Uh, and then you can draw the, the box between those two lines. So it's you will get it and uh, use those kind of boxes because they help uh, when to do the rebuys and where to put the take profit level. So it's quite easy, finally. But when you get used to that, then you can do that kind of strategy even manual if you do it on a higher time frame. Uh, no problem for that. It's a quite cool strategy. I'm already at the summary now, and uh, you see, side web markets have a high potential. And there's a statement, it's not a mathematical statement. The statement is that most of all markets are more than 70% of time in a sideward behavior. Uh, that kind of statement is uh, not from my end because um, uh, I'm lacking any definition of sideward and whatever. Uh, that's not quite easy to do it that way. But anyhow, we know from chart and looking to the charts visually, there are hundreds of opportunities of different timescales. My personal conclusion is that in some those trading of sideward markets have even a higher potential than trading what we normally do looking for big trends. Remember my chart with the gold, the one gold trade still not on that level of uh, the couple of hundred trades with a euro point of slot here at the very beginning of my talk here. Um, and still it's a problem of how to get that one gold trade exactly catching the highest move within six months. Uh, yeah, that's not uh, an easy job. But doing the trades on the side markets like here, yeah, that's a different story. That's much easier. What we need, the ideal sideward markets would even be a one which is volatile. So the dream for that strategy is to have long, for example, a long candle, a green one, followed by same amount red, same amount green, switching around always. That's the ideal market. Okay, that's a dream. But anyhow, so a volatile sideboard market is ideal for that kind of situation. What, what we should not have is a long-term move in one direction. And that's the reason why we looking why we are looking for symbols which don't have that kind of behavior. We could filter those out, and you see once again the list here: uh, typical symbols which are ideal for that kind of uh, of a trading setup. And you see markets, um, yeah, you normally would not touch, but for this strategy, you should touch. Uh, once again, be aware 
that that any important outstanding news like interest rate decisions or votes or you know that there's some specific uh, upcoming event in a specific country or region um, yeah those you should avoid and uh, then you are on a safe side and you should stop trading that kind of strategy for a couple of days maybe a couple of weeks i don't care because there are other symbols and um, if you don't trade then you cannot lose any money so that's not that bad uh, so stopping trades is sometimes uh, a good idea anyhow i hope you understood why sideward markets are attractive and how to trade those as well yeah that's for now i can tell you next month we have another one uh, then we go back to mean reversion strategies from a different kind of perspective and then uh yeah i hope you will get some uh, more and good insights into trading as well here um thank you very much for attending the webinar and see you next time hopefully have a good evening bye bye